This story comes from an article that was shared with me by my friend Chris. Uh, It's from Space News. Sandra Irwin wrote this on March 20th, 2023. And the U.S. Space Force budget uh, includes $60 million over two years for tactically responsive space. So the budget proposed was $30 million in fiscal year 2024 and $30 million in 2025. And it's interesting to talk about because I think the more that space is in the zeitgeist and we see SpaceX launches on the regular and Starlink gets more involved in our daily lives, the question comes up about the Space Force because you will inevitably hear Space Force Command is basically running launch operations out of Florida. Granted, there's there's the Navy's involved. There's, there's a lot involved in the operations at the Cape, but it's the Space Force uh, operation that's uh, handling a lot of this. And the budget for the Space Force that they submitted to con- uh, Congress is for $60 million over two years for a program known as Tactically Responsive Space. So Tactically Responsive Space is essentially an initiative to demonstrate, as they say here, I was going to riff there for a second, but I might as well just read the definition. (laughs) uh, The Tactically Responsive Space is an innovative uh, is an initiative to demonstrate the capabilities of commercial launch vehicles to deploy small satellites on short notice. Uh, this type of service would be used during a conflict to replace a damaged satellite or augment existing constellations. And military officials said having access to responsive launch would give the U.S. additional resilience in case adversaries, adversaries attempt to shoot down DOD or commercial satellites providing services to the military. Now, this is important because, essentially, uh, they're giving out these contracts to launch on 24 hours notice uh, to get ready for a launch. Uh, Firefly is one of the companies, Firefly Aerospace, that was given this contract. And they're specifically looking at smaller launch providers. This is also following kind of this new look at space from the military side of things of protecting the U.S.'s ability to launch things into space. And they've they've changed from this old-school style of having, you know, a few monopolistic, big uh, companies that launch stuff for the military. Those contracts were... Uh, basically, there was only one or two organizations that could launch things into space for the military uh, when we were in our uh, post-shuttle drought for launches. But now... They've changed it to try and invest in a lot of these smaller companies and to kind of spread out the risk of launching things into space over all these other launch providers. So um, it's a very interesting time as we see space become more of a, and more in an in involved domain. Obviously, we talked about it in episode 300. We've talked about Starlink in the fight in Ukraine and how those satellites, while satellites and telecommunications for, for top secret satellites have been around for a while, and our interview with Kevin Kelly, the CEO of Arcfield, that company focuses on these solutions for these types of contracts and satellites that are going up there for these projects. So for something like this and for for how much money is being injected into the Defense Department right now. Um, This Victus Knox goal, or Latin for conquer the night, is another way that that the U.S. is trying to keep up its resiliency in space uh, is by having the ability to replace anything that may get shot down. Now, I'm a little concerned that uh, (laughs) the assumption is that these things are going to get shot down soon uh, because of their, their use in the battlefield. I obviously, as someone who wants us to travel space, do not want a Kessler syndrome or Kessler effect where we we start having our enemies or even ourselves start destroying satellites that cause an, a, a, a tsunami of orbital debris that essentially makes it impossible for us to leave the planet at all because of how dangerous it'll be with all that debris. You would, you would get hit by something on your way out. 
we don't want that. But uh, there is this balance of figuring out uh, how to how to have all of us work together in space, and we're definitely in strange times. So um, if you thought that the Space Force was still a joke or that you weren't paying attention to it, this article is a really good example that the Space Force is not only here to stay, but is playing an, uh, a, a larger and larger role uh, as as the days continue here and our world uh, is, is more and more in conflict. So, uh, very interesting times. 60 million for the Space Force for tactically responsive space. We'll see where this goes.